Welcome to 7 Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. For the last few weeks, we've been under attack by vicious transformers with an appetite for mutilation and destruction. Actually, these attackers are pretty small, and their appetite is not for our flesh. It's for tender young leaves all around our garden. Here are leaves on this seven pot chaguanus red that have suffered some sap sucking. They're called four line plant bugs, and they're native to the eastern two thirds of the US and southern Canada. Behind is our unruly backyard rain garden, a prime breeding area for these bugs. Here's what we know about these little munchers. I'm displaying the Latin name on the screen so I can avoid trying to pronounce it. The four lined plant bug is an insect of the order Hemiptera, otherwise known as true bugs. Thanks, Wikipedia, for once again teaching me something new. Why are they called true bugs? Are there fake bugs? Upon further reading, I guess it's because everyone tends to call all insects and spiders bugs. But these plant feeding insects are the real thing. Hemiptera includes cicadas, aphids, plant hoppers, leaf hoppers, and shield bugs. All these bugs have piercing and sucking mouthparts well suited to sucking sap from plants. The four-lined plant bug is no exception. Behold the four-lined bug in one of its five nymph stages prior to adulthood. These will hatch and emerge in spring, and the timing is dependent on the climate where you live. Here in Minnesota, we started to see them in mid to late May. It has to eat lots of delicious leaf sap before it transforms into its adult form, when it will eat more sap and gain the power of flight. The nymph stage lasts for 17 to 20 days. Now it's mid-June and we're starting to see the adults emerge. Here's one on a mint plant. Those dark marks on the leaves will soon become holes. Damage can appear dark or light depending on plant pigmentation. What you're seeing is that damaged and soon to be dead tissue left after the sap has been extracted by our six-legged friend. On many leaves, holes form later when the dead tissue falls away. Here are some examples of the damage we've been seeing from around the garden. We had some pepper plants last year with very severe four-lined bug damage on all the leaves, and those plants could not do a good job of photosynthesis. They never really recovered. At least the peppers have not been bearing the brunt of the attack this year. The good news is that there is only one generation of four-lined plant bugs per year, and the adults feed only for about one month before they mate, lay their eggs, and expire. So what's the best way to control these critters? For most gardens, four-lined bug damage is mainly cosmetic. If you don't have a horde of the pests in your garden and the damage is minimal, doing nothing is probably best. If you have a more serious problem, the consensus seems to be that hand removal is the best option, and that's what we've been doing. Warning, close your eyes if you don't want to see a bug get squashed. When we find a nymph or adult four-lined bug, we try to grab it and dispatch it as quickly and as humanely as possible. Okay, it's safe to open your eyes again. When the damage only affects appearance, we would never turn to insecticides. We don't want to use any poison in our garden, even natural ones, because we don't want to run the risk of killing pollinators or other beneficial insects. There's no need. When the infestation has ended, just pinch off or prune the affected leaves, encouraging the growth of new foliage. The best method of control, and our method going forward, is better garden cleanup at the end of the season. Cut back growth on perennials and destroy stem debris that can harbor egg masses. Then, in early spring, look for egg clusters on your perennials and destroy any you find. If you want more information about four-lined plant bugs, check out the links in the video description. In other garden news, the peppers are doing well. It's hard to believe these are the same plants that almost died from heat and dehydration on our scorching 100 degree Memorial Day, until you notice the damage on the leaves. This Mata Friday was one of the most severely affected, and even it has recovered nicely, wearing its scars as a badge of honor. Many plants have started to form pods, and we should be picking and eating the first ripened examples of our favorite fruit in just a few weeks. That's it for this episode. Hopefully the four-lined bug's life cycle will end before any real damage is done to our hot pepper crop. All other signs point to a bountiful harvest. We'll be posting a new episode every week until the last pepper is picked in the fall, so please subscribe and tap the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever we upload a new episode. Thanks for watching. For 7 Pot Club, I'm Rob.